Sometimes when you draw the character, you did not plan for the background at all. You may find that adding background is some complicated task to do. In this tutorial, I will show you the basic step of adding perspective background to your artwork, from sketching with perspective ruler tool to final touch with correction layer. Adding background also creates story to the image. First of all, you have to decide the image resolution ratio. It depends on the purpose of image, such as publishing platform or printing size area. I will use the landscape resolution for the video screen. Next step, I will put the character on the canvas. To arrange the character, you may use the rule of third, which is a very basic rule for composition design. Separate the canvas into three rows and three columns. Then put the character focusing on the intersection point of the grid. This will create a very easy composition balance to the scene. For more detail about composition, check on this tutorial from Time You Work. The link is in the video description. My drawing is the bunny asking the way from the wolf, so this scene is supposed to happen on the road. If you don't apply the rule of thirds, you can simply put them on the road that leading to one vanishing point at the middle of image. Without the perspective background, the wolf will point to nowhere and may lose the context of the story in the image. What are you pointing at? When apply the rule of thirds, you can see the scene telling more story than just focusing on the middle alone. For example, in this image, you can see where the bunny is walking to. And in this image, you can see what the bunny just passed. By adjusting the composition, the image can tell the friend's story. Normally, when you draw the character, you already apply some perspective by the view you look at it. The basic component of perspective are the eye level and the vanishing points. The eye level is the level where we look at the character. The character perspective is changing when we change the height to watch it. We must know the eye level where we look at the character because it will also be the eye level of the background. Create new canvas and put on the character folder. Estimate the eye level for the character. I will use the 3D figure to help with the perspective check. You can find it in the Material Panel, 3D, and Body Figure. Drag it to the canvas. You can adjust the body type to match your character and use as the reference. Put the model on the ground before moving it. Then adjust the camera to place the model as near as possible to the character. Click on the ruler icon to show the perspective ruler that come with the model. You can use the object tool to adjust the ruler position. Adjust the model to character eye level and see if the character perspective is close to the model or not. You can also click on the model path to adjust the post. To fix the perspective of character, select the folder and go to Edit, Transform, and Mesh Transformation. Increase the number of the node to make the mesh table, and adjust your character related to the reference. 3D model is also useful when you want to check the perspective of the gesture or reference to some post that is hard to draw. When we already get the eye level and perspective check for the character, do some quick setting for the background. The main setting for the scene is it happen on the road, so I ask thing we may see on the side road, such as mountain, road sign, tree, and house. Don't worry about the perspective at this step, just draw to put thing around its position to use as a reference. On the canvas, create a new layer and draw the box covering your character. Here, the direction of the box is related to the road. Then create the perspective ruler, select on the perspective ruler, and drag on the box side to create the vanishing point. 
you have to drag two lines from one vanishing point. The eye level will appear when the first vanishing point were made. You can adjust the ruler with object too. Create the vanishing point also on the other side. Start with the building. That is the most depend on perspective. Draw the project lines from character to use as the approximate height for the house. Then draw the box for one house. I also draw the door using the height of the character for the reference. If the building has two floors, draw into the stack of two boxes. Always clean up the projection line and use different color to avoid confusion. For the road in small village, it's not in some clean shape, just draw it using the perspective reference. For another object, draw the box to reference to its position and scale. I also add mountains far away. When the object is so far, it's no longer related to the perspective of the picture. Let's start with the building. To draw it, create new vector layer, enable the ruler snap, and draw the detail to the house. I recommend to use the vector layer for easy to clean up the projection line. Make sure you enable the vector eraser in the tool property. For the position of the window on the second floor, I draw the line under the window on the first floor, then select it with object tool. Hold the shift key and drag it to the second floor. Now you can draw the window with correct perspective position. You may want to add the gable to the house and it may not relate it to the perspective ruler of the image. Select the perspective ruler tool with the add vanishing point process. Then select the ruler layer and create vanishing point related to the gable. You can also remove the vanishing point later with the delete vanishing point process. I disable the ruler snap to add the detail to the roof. For other object on the background, use the box we made for the reference position and scale to draw it. Sometimes when you put the character on the background, you may see it's not so pop out from the scene. The easy solution to fix this is just using the lighter color on the background or reduce the background detail to focus on the character. For this tutorial, I will make the ink less background to make more focusing on the character with the ink outline. The color selection for the background is also some complicated task to do. so. I start with the grayscale first, create new luster layer for the color, and hide other ink layer. In the standard color set, you can pick the various gray tint to work on the grayscale task. Fill color for each area, and repeat the step for other part. For the shading, set the light direction related to the character. Group layers into layer folder by the composite part. And create new raster layer above the folder. Set the layer mode to multiply. And paint the shading with gray color. Clip the shading layer with the folder to hide the rigging area. Then put on the color. Create new raster layer and clip it to the grayscale layer. Select the color and fill on the layer. You can change the layer bending mode to overlay to make it blend with the grayscale level. I also hide the ink layer to cutting the detail for the edge. Add the texture to color area by creating a new clipping layer over the base color. I always use around 3 color 
the base color, the shadow, and the light color. Paint over the area with a rough wash brush. This will give the simple texture to the image. To make more natural look for the road, add new layer and paint over the hard edge. Also, add little details such as rock or flower. For the building, instead of hiding the ink layer, just adjust the opacity down. Make new layer and paint over the ink. I use the flat oil painting brush to make traditional painting look. Use only few color to avoid the mess on detail. I also add texture on the wall. I use watercolor brush to paint the straw texture on the roof. Also paint the additional detail to fill the blank space. I use a darker pencil to paint the small grass detail. Create multiply mode layer to add extra shadow to the background. And the background is done. By this painting step, you can easily control the color, light, and shading on the background. When put the character on the background, you will need to adjust the color to make the character standing into the scene. Put all background layer into one folder. Then add a new correction layer. Go to layer, new correction layer. I use the hill, saturation, luminosity to adjust the tone. The effect of correction layer will only appear on the layer under it. For the character, add extra shadow on the multiply layer. And highlight on glow layer. Paint the yellow-gray tone with airbrush. We make natural soft tone of light on glow layer and soft shadow on multiply layer. Paint the strong highlight with watercolor brush. Also add some atmosphere light on the character. Here, I use the blue color of the sky. Paint the atmosphere color on the background will add the depth to the image and make the character more standing out from the background. I also add more light to the object on the front. This will also increase more depth to the image. And here is the result. I hope this tutorial helped you get some idea of finishing your art by adding perspective background with only some Crypt Studio standard feature. If you have any question, you can ask me on the Discord server. The link is in the video description. Enjoy painting and see you in the next video.